is God. And he really is.
praise God. How many of need Jesus to be an offense all around you? Thank you. 
does what God has blessed them to be able to do. Will all the youth sponsors come forward? Just like the rest of us. 
and use us to be examples to them. For example is better than precept. Help us, Jesus. Help us to show them how we ought to live this Christian life. Bless them and keep them. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Those that agree with that, somebody say hallelujah. Oh, say hallelujah. Oh, Tell God praise God. So,
We bless you, God, for spirit of worship that's already here. Putting us in a mood to understand, Lord, what you're doing in our midst. God, bless you, Lord, for that right now. I ask the Lord that you are in our hearts, that you incline our ears to what the spirit of the Lord has to tell us right now in this time that we have. We bless you, oh God. Please, Lord, save somebody's soul. Make somebody whole. Draw someone closer to you, oh Lord, in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Those that believe that, say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The gift of gifts. Paul Tripp tells the story in a sermon. He said, I gave birth to a son who just doesn't understand gifts. My wife and I said to go out when he was a little guy to buy what we thought was the perfect gift. He would tear open the gift and he end up playing with the box. He said it drove us absolutely crazy. We decided on Christmas that we were going to find the gift of gifts that he would not be able to resist. We shot and we shot, but we found the gift. We were so excited. We were much more excited at that moment when the gift came out from under the tree and he was about to unwrap it. Much more excited than he would have ever been. He ripped open a gift like a little boy would and actually got out this toy and began to play with it. He said, I had a feeling of such victory. I went into the kitchen to get something to drink, was in there just for a few minutes and came out and he was sitting in the box. <laughs> Some of y'all did it, but I couldn't believe it. All that still find gift of gifts. One gift. He could finally play with it. As soon as I walk away, come right back. He's still playing with the box. In fact, keeping 100 this morning, many Christians act just like the little boy. They would prefer to play with the box of God's gifts than the gift itself. Unfortunately, children of God, like the little boy, miss the point of the gift of giving during the Christmas season. Could it be the reason people are missing the real meaning behind gifts is because we are giving the wrong thing. Unfortunately, though, beloved, too often we measure the size of a person's heart by the size of the gift. Y'all be quiet right there. See, some of us always compare how much someone spends on us uh, to how much a person loves us when that is not always the case. Say amen, somebody. For you can be filthy rich and buy someone a mean a Mercedes and a mansion and still not truly love that person. I know y'all saying, just give me the meat, we'll figure out the rest. See, conversely, though, you can be broker than broke and struggling like the Evans family on good times when you are scratching and surviving and cannot afford to buy any gifts for your children, but you love your family, you love your Michael, and you love your JJ from the bottom of your heart. See, beloved, this season, beloved, let's return to the real meaning of Christmas, which is Christ's birthday and not Best Buy or Walmart's birthday. See, this Christmas, try to plug the hole in your wallet and open up your heart and pour out Christ's love to everybody. Try to give the gift of your time to people you rob of time all year long. See, give the gift 
of your presence, to your mother or your father, they're still living, whom oh, you have not seen or spoken to in several years. Give the gift of forgiveness to church folk, and that devastated you, that disrespected you, and lied to your faith. You do know Christians lie. See, most importantly, give the gift of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Trust me, beloved, it's worth more than the suits at Men's Warehouse and more than the diamonds at Schwarzschild. It's even worth more than millions of dollars. And I believe somebody can testify today that your salvation is the one gift that keeps on giving. Yes, it is. See, out of all the gifts you receive, uh, get this, beloved. It's the only gift of gifts that you need. For it gives you hope, beloved, when you're hopeless. It gives you joy when you're sad. I wish I had witnessed it. It gives you peace when you're in a song. It gives you mercy to keep you from going first class to hell. Grace to preserve a seat for you in glory and power to be more than a conqueror down here. That's the gift of gifts. But let me break it down further. See, here in our text this morning, Paul here calls this precious gift indescribable. See, at this juncture, Paul is literally standing on his feet in praise to God for this indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. And I know you don't feel me yet, so let's beloved, explore what actually caused Paul to give God praise and thanks for the gift. Well, Paul, get this beloved, was previously boasting to the Macedonians about the monetary gift he was eagerly expecting from the Corinthian Christians to encourage the Corinthians to give generously. He told them in verse 6 and 7 of this chapter, he said, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart. Somebody ought to underline that. Decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. You know the rest, don't you? For God loves a cheerful giver. See, in short, don't be stingy with your offering. No, give because it's in your heart to give. Amen. See, anybody can almost write a check for love. Anybody can throw some change in the offering plate. But God is not looking at the amount that you're giving. God is looking at what's behind the giving. What's in your heart? I know Catherine One say, what's in your wallet? But God is saying, what's in your heart? <laughs> Amen. See, as a result, Paul later says in verse 12, this service that is given, that you perform, is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it's also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. See, people will give God the glory and even pray more fervently for you because you give them money in their time of need. Say amen. Now, I know you feel that this morning. Just that's why I should look at somebody and say, let's give you $20. Uh -huh. Amen. Wait for it. Amen. See, see after concluding, beloved, his stewardship teaching, Paul became excited because his mind began to think about the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. For it had not been for it had not been for Jesus coming into their hearts, the Corinthians would not have the grace to give anything in the first place. See, Paul was so ecstatic about it that he was probably jumping up and down, waving his hands in the air, shouting, Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, because he couldn't find the words to describe the greatest gift ever known and given to man. Y'all know him, don't you? Jesus Christ. See, I can see that some of you still not feeling me yet, but don't quite get it yet. Maybe we can get a glimpse of this 
precious gift uh, by looking at how a little girl named Rosemary loved her rag doll. I love the story. See, when Rosemary, at the age of three, she was given a little rag doll, which quickly became her inseparable companion. She had other toys, beloved, that were intrinsically far more valuable, but none that she loved like she loved that rag doll. Now soon the rag doll became more and more rag and less and less doll. It also became more and more dirty. If you tried to clean the rag doll, it became more ragged steel. And if you didn't try to clean the rag doll, it became dirtier steel. No matter how dirty the rag doll became, Rosemary would not and could not let her rag doll go. The sensible thing to do was simply, you know it, trash the rag doll. But that was unthinkable for Rosemary because she loved that rag doll. See, that's why, beloved, I rose to tell somebody today that all of us are just like that rag doll. But the Bible says our righteousness is but filthy rags. Like a rag doll, we fall short of the glory of God. Guess why? Because we get dirty sometimes. And although he cleaned us up, we still become ragged in how we treat people. We become ragged in how we walk. We become ragged in how we talk to folks.
see, every time you pass these unusual gifts, you are filled with wonder and awe because you are curious as to what it could be. It's a gift that exceeds your comprehension or logical thinking. And although it's mysterious, you are happy that you got it. You ever see somebody just as big as they can be, nice big old present, you wondering, what's on the inside of this? Thing? What did he get me now? What did she give me? Amen. See, brothers are kind of like that commercial, uh, that snow commercial. Uh, when when the uh, man he actually gives uh, the, the, his his woman uh, a dog, and then and turn around, she blows a whistle, and out comes out of nowhere a big old truck. Amen. Hey, can you do that for me? You need to get your whistle on. <laughs> hey, hey, <man. laughs> I'm waiting for a whistle. Hey, 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 man. She said, I'm waiting for a small box, too. <laughs> hey, man, she said, let me come and help you here. See, Mary was the recipient of the mysterious gift of all times. The angel Gabriel said in Luke, and Luke 1, um, chapter 30, beloved, y'all know the text. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will keep a child and give birth to a son, and you ought to give him the name, call somebody, Jesus. That folk, Mary, scratches her head and says, how will this be? Come on, we've been preaching about this. Since I am a virgin, I don't know, I am engaged to Joseph, but uh, I have not consummated our relationship yet. Although Gabriel tells her that the Holy Spirit will come upon her and the power of the Most High will overshadow her, this gift of all gifts was still mysterious because she was Because Luke chapter 2, verse 19. But Mary kept all, all these things and pondered them in her heart. That's how we all see, beloved. Let the mystery of a Christ gift in you rekindle your heart this Christmas. This mysterious gift should give you reason to celebrate because you still cannot figure out how the Lord kept you from losing your mind. I wish I had somebody that knows that. It doesn't make sense how the Lord kept you, beloved, right in the midst of a car accident. And although it looked like it should have killed you, you walked out without a scratch. You don't know why he closes some doors and opens other doors of opportunity. It's an unsolved mystery as to how you got the job someone more qualified didn't. It is inconceivable as to how your cancer is cured and healed, but your friends are still dying from it. How is it that you have all that you need and when you lost your job six months ago? In fact, I don't even know how or what the Lord will bless me with on tomorrow. I don't know the kind of favor that God has in store for me. Amen. It is freely given regardless of your effort. 
for Samaritans. Paul said, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. And while researching this word, get one of it, I found uh, this Greek word, uh, dorea, which gives us an English word, gratuity. Y'all know what gratuity is, don't you? See, now that's the dictionary. It tells us that gratuity means something given voluntarily or beyond obligation, usually in return for or anticipation of some service. Uh-huh. In other words, can I put it in short ladies' terms? It's a tip. Yeah, it is. With that etymological understanding, we can rightfully uh, reinterpret the text to read, thanks be to God for his indescribable tip. See, if that, beloved, is the case, then I should be able to reinterpret John chapter 4, verse 10, where Jesus is a Samaritan woman, a beloved at a well about salvation. He said, if thou knewest the gift of God, or should I say, if thou knewest the tip of God, every adult uh, in this church should know by now that you should tip good service. Oh, no, she pray, man. <laughs> and no amens on that one. Boy, hey, hey, that was tough. Uh, now I realize that some of y'all are going to say I'm just straight up cheap. Amen. <laughs> and will not tip for good or bad service. <laughs> See, after, after you are waiting on at a restaurant and both the food, say what me, and the service met your quality standards, <laughs> you should always give a tip. Say amen. amen. After your bottle, amen. Uh, all my petitions gonna love me on this one. Uh, after they your bottle petition cuts or puts extensions in your hand, amen. It's yours though, amen. Based on your standards, without plugging or burning you, guess what? You should leave a tip. A minimum of fifteen percent is a normal tip. That's the price. For the good or service. Now, most of the time, you don't tip until after mm -hmm. the goods are given or services have been rendered. Yeah, yeah most of Starbucks say, man, I know y'all don't think, you know, white chocolate won't go with some oat milk, amen. No, uh, amen. Serve well, add some toffee nut, amen, and take away the will. I, I know you don't do that. That's too long. I, I feel you just want straight up coffee. But all my Starbuckians, <laughs> you go there now, as soon as you, as soon as you order your drink and you get up to uh, the window, they don't even ask you about it. They just turn the thing around. And what do you see right in front of you? Percentages of tips. Am I the only one making this up? Yeah, this is true. It's right there in front of you. Two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, and keep on going up. Or other. I bet I'm going to use up. <laughs> really? I haven't even received my coffee yet. We receive the goods of the services. If tipping is done 99% of the time after and almost never before, except my Starbucks now, never before goods or services have been rendered, then I have a problem with calling the indescribable gift of Christ a gratuity or a tip because a tip in a worldly sense is based on what a person has already done or received. A person has to do something in order to get my tip. I don't know about yours. But when I think about for a moment the unspeakable, unfathomable, and incredible gift of Christ, there, there, there was nothing we could have done to earn the tip, if you will, of salvation. He didn't just tip us after we got our acts together. He didn't tip us after we started living right or after we gave our tithes and our offering, after we started talking right, after 
after we stop cussing for God. No, Jesus kept us before we stop playing on the field, before we stop cussing, before we stop condemning, before we stop manipulating, lying with a straight face, and before we stop drinking with sour. The Lord Jesus Christ has tipped in somebody here, and I believe you're with me with the power of God. That's why all of us should recognize that we have been tipped. And let me help you for a minute for a moment. If you have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, that's a tip. If you have the Holy Spirit taking up residence in you, that's a tip. If your soul has been snatched from hell, that's a tip. If you've been healed by the blood of the Lamb, that's a tip. If you've been set free, that's a tip. If you've been anointed, that's a tip. If you've been blessed, Because you didn't want to go into the store. Here is what Amazon. 
Amazon Prime, though, it's interesting uh, with this because, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it's something that it was started out really in New York and Baltimore. But don't you know it's now about 2,000 different cities? And if you want something like paper towels or fresh groceries for a fee, you can have them delivered to you. Amen. Within one hour. Amen. You won't pay for it, though. Amen. But please tell me what happens, what happens, beloved, if you cannot afford Amazon Prime Now membership free? Uh, well, what if you just can't seem to go that route because you operate on a budget? Uh, please tell me what happens if a severe storm comes and you, UPS planes are grounded for days? What, what happens, beloved, uh, if there is another supply chain shortage? Uh, what what if trucks will not move when I go through the gates and travel to your state to get you what you need? What happens in those situations? And before you find yourself frantically running up credit cards for Amazon Prime now, might I suggest the one gift that can arrive faster than right now and sooner than later. This gift has an angelic courage service that can fly through any storm
I'm not saying that you shouldn't get help when you have a mental illness to tell people because you really shouldn't. There's such a thing called clinical depression. There's, there's an imbalance. There's a chemical imbalance. There's something literally that you have to address. Don't, don't, put, don't put that aside. No. Bring that in. I'm saying get that but also recognize what Jesus can do. He is your hope of salvation. He is the hope of glory. He's the reason why we live, we move, and we have our being. I don't know what you are. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have that indescribable gift. I don't know. But I can't tell you by virtue of having it. It gives me joy. It gives me peace. When I got a bad day, I, I can still smile because the Lord is still with me. I know that all things are working together for my good. I know that I may be in a crisis, but I got a God that knows how to deal with the storm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not neglecting medical attention and mental health. You need to get it. But don't you ever forsake Christ, the indescribable gift. Because when all of that does not work, what else do you have? I got Jesus. Anybody got Jesus? Listen, listen, if you don't have them, here it is. If you don't have them in your life, preacher, what have you? How do I get it? Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus up from the dead. And the Bible said, you shall be saved. Yes, you will. And so if you're here today, say, I want to receive Christ in my life. I, I tried everything I could. I need Jesus. I need you to walk down that aisle and meet me. To say, excuse me, neighbor. I'm going to get Jesus in my life. This will be the merriest Christmas ever. Because I got Christ. On the inside. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? If you're online, reach out to us. Connect with us. We want you to be saved by His amazing grace. But also, if you're here today, already got that gift, but you're looking for a church family, I need you to step out of the alley and come. Come and give God praise. Is there another? Is there another? We're waiting on you. There's still time. There's still time. Come on, give God praise for my Thank you for that empowerment. 
holy gift in our life that makes us holy, that makes us look like He, that makes us lights of the earth, salt of the earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for it now. I pray in the name of Jesus, for those who are suffering right now, God, suffering with this decision to make, make it crystal clear to them now that they need Christ, they need you. Ask their Lord and save you in their life. Save their soul. Make them holy in you. And we'll be careful to give you praise and glory for you. Praise in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. Come on, count those hands. Give God praise. You may be seated.
say amen. Say amen again. And you rise to your feet and give God a kiss and I praise you for your love. Bless the Lord in this place. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Let everybody say amen. 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 Look at somebody say, Merry Christmas to you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. All our leaders, they should be